is kicking off here. The state's third witness in the Senzo Mewa murder trial, Dumelo Magala, claims the soccer star pinned Bongani Ndanzi against the wall. Five men accused of killing the former Bafana Bafana and Orlando Pirates captain during an alleged botched robbery back in 2014. Stanzi is accused number two in the matter. Uh, Mr. Madala, if you can perhaps state or inform the court who is this person that made you uncomfortable. We are challenging what in fact to get we and Jen or Tabi and Yiga or to challenge and can do to ban the Mongo Bona or a way to put on Yan. Yes, this man with the blue t shirt or green t shirt. Yeah, the one that was held yeah, by his chains of. Sorry? Uh, He's the one who had the cut a beard that was cut mm. or shaved. Madala denied allegations by a defense lawyer that there had been an argument in the house before Mewa's death. It follows claims that Meiwa Longwe Twala, as well as Zandi and Kelukumalo, were fighting when the gun went off. I put it to you. Longwe came in the house upset. If if we were someone that I was familiar with or that I was acquainted to, I would have been able to see that, but I am not acquainted to him. He is not my friend. An argument in short between him, <coughs> Kelly, Sandy, and the deceased. Where? In the house. In I, was, I was in the house. I never heard <coughs> it. I further put it to you that in that process, that is when the gun, the gunshot went off. Those are lies. Those are lies. Now, Tobani further alleges the witness called Mewa's brother to say the soccer star had been shot by accident. It's a claim Madlala has refuted today. Then you, yourself, you phoned Sfiso Mewa to say Senzo Mewa was shot by mistake. You never said there was a robbery. You can check your, even your statement. You said he was shot by mistake and they stopped you. That Amen. witness, wait, sir. Wait for the interpreter. That witness will come and testify to the court to that effect what you told him. Uh, I called the Sfiso. I informed him that Senzo had been shot. I never said anything about a mistake, and then he wanted to know where I was. I told him I was in Johannesburg because he didn't know that I was the site. Well, our reporter Linda Mnisi joins us now to wrap up some of the proceedings of the day. Linda, of course, part of what we saw was an incredible start in the morning with the re-emergence of Advocate Defo. And then, of course, some sensational claims being made in, part, in, in the courtroom today. Let's kick it off with Advocate Defo. Why was he in court today? Well, we were all surprised, Kathy, to see Advocate Melissa Lette for showing up in court and even robing, uh, you know, uh, perhaps as a sign of maybe that he would be taking part in these proceedings. Uh, but it became clearer later on, uh, just before the start of the proceedings, that he was there and wanted to see the judge uh, and ask that, uh, you know, the other legal representatives join him in chambers as he was going to see the judge, but Advocate Mshonola telling the court that, in fact, they disagreed with him wanting to see 
uh, you know, the judge, and that is when security was called because at that time the judge had not, uh, you know, come out to, uh, you know, start the proceeding. So it was a surprise visit, but also you'll remember that tomorrow uh, the Pretoria High Court will be handing over, uh, handing down a judgment in his RPC matter. So that did really raise questions around why exactly he chose today to show up in court. Seeing the judge about what, Linda? What, what did he have to discuss with the judge? And um, could he not have set up a different meeting outside of this particular trial? Uh, because that seemed to have caused a great deal of, of, of confusion, especially because he was fully robed. Yes, especially because he was fully robed, Kathy, and the state saying that what he informed them was that uh, he's coming here or coming to court in his capacity as watching brief for docket 375. You'll remember that he's representing uh, the Meiwa family, Spiso Meiwa being one of the people that is representing in that particular case. So it seems as though his issues were not, um, you know, uh, did, he did not succeed because the judge even went as far as saying, what happened really was uncalled for because he waited and that delayed the start mm -hmm. of the proceedings this morning. Well, it wasn't the only uh, sensational thing to happen in court, if anything. It was a part of the allegations that would come out of the defense that in many ways paints a picture of the kind of argument that the defense is going to, building, going to be building its case around in terms of what it says happened on the night since Omewa was killed. Yes, and it seems to be putting this version to, uh, you know, the witness, Tumelo Madala, who also happens to be the close friend of Senzo Meiwa in saying that, uh, in fact, you know, there was an argument that took place uh, prior to, um, you know, the gunshot going off, uh, which ultimately, as we know, killed Senzo Meiwa. But Tumelo Madala is disputing that, saying there was an intruder. You would have seen earlier on him being asked to identify one of the intruders who came into mm. the house. And it was quite interesting looking at, uh, you know, the description that he gave yesterday of the intruder who also carried a gun and his um, you know, identification or pointing out of the second accused because he did mention that uh, you know, the intruder had dreadlocks, the intruder was short, uh, he also had big eyes. But I think those are issues that will then be later ventilated uh, during cross-examination because if you look at Bongani Ntanzi, he's slightly taller, right? But, of course, those are issues that will be ventilated during cross-examination. It's something that the lawyers did not want to let go of in court today because um, they immediately questioned the admiss admissibility of that evidence and of that doc identification by this witness. Yes, indeed, because you'll remember that uh, Domelo Madlala revealed that previously he was taken for an ID parade, and in that ID parade, what happened there is he could not recognize anybody really um, who entered the house or any of the intruders. And then secondly, he then went for, uh, you know, the description of this intruder where he gave this description uh, that I gave you. And um, ultimately, Kathy, what the defense is arguing is that procedurally, it is flawed for the state to now come and want to do a doc identification when they've not laid the basis. They did not conduct an ID parade previously on the five men. So on what basis are they then coming to court to ask for a doc um, identification? Because then they need to match what the witness uh, is saying with what they have. I put it to you that you were given money after you appeared in a Netflix documentary. Netflix. Okay. That I'm not going to deny him. I was given money indeed. Uh, it's because there are certain things that I signed or that we had agreed to. I told them that you were doing that at my spare time. That was my spare time. You'll have to give me money. Of course, Linda, what we're seeing the defense they do is paint a picture of this witness as being somebody who effectively is a bit 
money hungry and would do anything if given uh, the right price or the right amount. Yes, I mean, um, you know, how they laid the basis for this question was them asking or him asking him about, um, you know, the issue around money and how he seems to be given money. You'll remember he indicated that he was sent money to come to Joburg, um, you know, just the day before Senso was, was killed and it only reflected the next day. And he also mentioned that going back to Durban after the incident had taken place, he was also given money. And the defense is asking then that you seem to be given money a lot. Um, you know, with the Netflix documentary, I put it to you then that you were paid. And he says, well, yes, I was paid. All right. Well, Linda, we're completely out of time. No time to get into some of the scandalous aspects of the claims being made by the defense. But undoubtedly, those will continue to be ventilated in the court. Linda Mnisi is tracking that story for us.